one more minute. <clears throat> Welcome everybody to this session where UniWell meets New European Bauhaus. My name is Anne-Charlotte Larsson. I'm a vice rector of internationalization at Linnaeus University in Sweden, and I will be moderating today's session. We will bring together two of the EU initiatives, European universities, and New European Bauhaus. And our European University for Wellbeing is very proud to have several projects related to New European Bauhaus initiative uh, that we will share with you today. The projects that we have chosen come from the universities of Florence, from Nantes and from Linnaeus University. And they share aspects of functionality and aesthetics. And they focus on sustainability, beauty and inclusion in different ways. And that way makes uh, the new European Bauhaus initiative come to life. Today, uh, we will be meeting these different projects and I'm very happy to welcome you to this session. We will start with a short introduction on our European University for Wellbeing, UniWell, by our managing director, Dr. Graham Harrison. Graham joined us uh, in February of 2022, and previously his work, he has worked for the World Bank and the US National Science Foundation. And he is a professor of chemical engineering with more than 10 years at Clemson University in the US. So very welcome, Graham. Thank you, Anne Charlotte, for that welcome. And uh, welcome to everybody who is here. As, as Anne Charlotte says, my name is Graham Harrison, and I'm the managing director for the university, European University of Wellbeing, UniWell. UniWell is one of 41 university alliances supported under the European Universities Initiative. We're composed of our eight partners, Birmingham, Cologne, Florence, Leiden, Linnaeus, Murcia, Nantes, and Semmelweis, a diverse set of universities from across the continent who came together two years ago to work around well-being. And UniWell's core mission is to understand, to improve, measure, and rebalance the well-being, not just of individuals, but also of our community and society as a whole. We do this based upon our joint values, democratic, inclusive, diverse, research and challenge-based, inter and transdisciplinarity, entrepreneurial and co-creation. And I think it's obvious that our values and our mission really align with the new European Bauhaus. At UniWell, we see our core theme, well-being, as being integrated with European values in society. And this doesn't just come from statements from the Council of the European Union or from OECD initiatives. Europe is not just about economic growth or integration or technological innovation. Rather, Europe also prioritizes its citizens, its cultures, and its society. It values well-being for individuals and for Europe as a whole. Some examples, this must mean, for example, that the digital transformation must be human-centered. It means a green transition and long-term sustainability, key to the new European Bauhaus, fully consider individuals and society as well as technological solutions. On the academic side, UniWell has four research areas, owned and driven by academics from across the Alliance to develop our teaching and research agendas. These agendas are linked to SDGs and to our existing university strengths. 
And in particular, I think the most relevant for today, our arena on environment, urbanity, and well-being is linked to SDG 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities, and the themes of the new European Bauhaus. We develop position papers. We support seed funding to catalyze collaborations. And the heart of UniWell is, of course, our academic mission with our academics and our students. As pointed out in a recently published European strategy for universities, excellent inclusive universities are a condition and foundation for open, democratic, fair, and sustainable societies. Science has a leading role in Europe. The framework and horizon programs that advance our knowledge, our exchange, and our cooperation. Europe has trusted academics, knowing that this trust ultimately builds European values and European bridges. And so it's important for UniWell uh, to focus on connecting our universities and our alliance to society. And that, of course, starts with our theme of well being. It has to be more than that. We have to disseminate knowledge, our findings, and indeed our students into society. So we want to be an employer of the future. We want to embed well being into our university culture. We want to build well being on all of our campuses through offices. And we want to share with our local communities and across Europe. One example is our festival, a nine day hybrid festival across all of our partner institutions. And this priority in connecting to society is really where I'd like to close my remarks today. The new European Bauhaus Initiative connects our living spaces and experiences with a sustainable and inclusive future. And I hope that through the presentations in this session and the following discussion, you'll see and we will explore how UniWell meets the new European Bauhaus for the benefit of us all. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. And we would like to welcome Saverio Mecca from the University of Florence to talk on the first project, Wellbeing, Proximity and Urban Spaces, Strategies and Planning Scenarios for a Healthy City. Saverio is an architect and a full professor at the University of Florence. He works on academic research in the field of architectural heritage and sustainable development, knowledge management, and vernacular architecture project and risk management. And we look very much forward to listening to your presentation, Saverio. Welcome. Oh, thanks. I can start. Can you see it? Please go ahead. It's OK? Yes. Yeah, OK. The University of Florence, uh, part of the UNIWELL, is cooperation with uh, the national Council of Economics of, and Labor CNEL, it's a national organization, institution, organized from March to June, a national cycle of a five seminar on the theme of physical augmented proximity, well-being and the reduction of inequalities, gender, generational and territorial. The CNEL Unity National Seminars were attended by more than 90 experts from research and academia, public institution, government, civil societies, uh, so association enterprises. The results will be available shortly and constitute the most extensive scientific and public consultation on the issue of the physical augmented proximity. Here I can present some of the concepts that emerged in the seminars. The concept of proximity is fundamental to the idea of the city and of urbanity for, of the 21st century today emerged as essential in its, in its material and immaterial, geographical, physical, and the relational dimension, strongly related to, to the wellness, but also uh, useful both for understand and imagine a future that we want to be inclusive, safe, resilient, sustainable, and beautiful. The condition of urban living, larger or smaller cities, the urbanity, response to a need for, for proximity, a need for that the industrial revolution has interpreted as physical proximity and spatial concentration of production and consequently of people. Imprinting our living spaces, cities and territories to the needs of production and the scientific organization of work. 
but the shared perception on the unsustainability of the model of production and consumption of the natural resources of alteration of water, air, and soil combines with the digital transition, which is radically and rapidly changing our acting and interacting individually and collectively in production, education, research, services, and social relations in our relation with places and spaces. The pandemic and lockdown have accelerated this process, but have produced another effect, a deep uncertainty about health and life, and the increasing value of the physical and mental well-being, and of the relationship of proximity with the people and nature. The produced an enhancement of the value of a proximity. The concept of proximity has been trivialized and reduced by the message of the 15 minutes city, which corresponds to a simplistic and outdated vision. Proximity is much more. It is an important component of people's well-being. The complexity of proximity cannot be reduced to the mere distance of a public transport store. Proximity measure as accessibility to punctual services as the quality of the public space of the cultural and emotional relation, however, realizes the urban space. Proximity is, in this sense is closely connected with the complexity of the human settlement, especially defined. The complexity of the territory, today urban to a greater or lesser extent, can be measured through parameters that we can trace back to proximity. Proximity takes on the force of fundamental right of all citizens, a right to proximity that concerns services and infrastructure, public spaces and places, wild nature and tamed nature, social and cultural life. A right to proximity is also a right to equal opportunities beyond boundaries of gender, age, or income. Essential resource, sustainability, and resilience of the 21st century communities. Our next project for new habitats in the frame of the new European Bauhaus should be based on a more intense and happy possibility of a proximity with one's own mother community, with one's own territory, with the system of affective and or parental relation, with the cultural landscape to which one belongs. But even more, to a proximity with nature, wild and domesticated nature, a physical, emotional, but also pro productive proximity. Our commitment it will be to design public spaces enhancing the complex proximity of the communities with a natural environment in a new union between nature and culture, supporting the diversity of interaction between natural environment, society, and culture that have generated over the centuries and the heritage of the cultural diversity of the places and the communities. So proximity can be the driver for designing more intense and freer and simpler urban space, public space, more capable of supporting community life, more resilient and sustainable, because those who live in it, know it, understand it, and can participate in its management. Thanks. Thank you very much, Saverio. That gives an interesting aspect on how we develop our societies. Now we move over to Nantes University and a project about creating user-friendly oases of freshness in urban environments made with raw earth and XXL 3D printing using robotics architecture and design. That sounds very exciting. So very much welcome, Ignacio Riquena Ruiz, lecturer and researcher. He is a, an associate professor in architectural theory and design at ENSA Nantes. 
and he's an architect since uh, 2006. His main research topics is in the technical, sensory and cultural dimensions of architectural climate since the early 20th century to the current day. Very welcoming, Arsio, and please, the floor is yours. Hello to everyone here from Nantes. I'm going to share my presentation. Please tell me if it is okay for you. It's perfect, okay. thank you. Thank you. So, uh, well, hello to everyone here from Nana. Thank you, Anne Charlotte, for this uh, kind of presentation. In the next few minutes, I will introduce you to the research uh, um, and design proposal that we have called uh, Terra Cool Project. Its aim is to create a prototype of a urban cool spot, or, or cool spot, or also as said here in the program, uh, an oasis of freshness through 3D printing techniques, but by using uh, here raw earth uh, as construction material. This project allies the skills of uh, two research labs of Nantes Université, uh, the LS2N lab represented by my colleagues, Benoit Fouré and Elodie Paquet, both specialize in robotics and 3D printing, and the AAU lab represented my, by Daniel Sire and myself, both specialized in urban climates and architectural and urban design. And we also have with us our colleagues of the City Design Lab of the Nantes Atlantic School of Design, and all of this with the support of uh, the, uh, the team of West Industry Creative. So, but what's a urban cool spot or an oasis of freshness? It is basically a public space whose spatial and climatic conditions contribute to creating a localized fresh area outdoors in, a, in, a, in an outdoor space. This fresh area is also characterized because it contrasts with its urban environments. Uh, so it makes it it's cooler than, uh, than the other, other, other space around and contributes to urban resilience to warmer temperatures, temperatures, at least from three perspectives. The one of uh, the preservation of urban life in summer in the public space, the one also of uh, the citizens' health and social equity in the access of to public space by allowing all the population to stay more time in public space and also social interaction, and also by the promotion of urban well-being by creating ordinary and restorative experience in the city during summertime. Since uh, 2018, the AEU lab uh, studies urban cool spots, design processes, and citizens' experience when using them uh, in our research project called Coolscapes from Cooling and Landscape. And we have created and analyzed a worldwide database of 182 urban cool spots, so basically urban designs that characterize the design approaches, the actors, and also the techniques that. that are used by the by the designers. Uh, on, on the other hand, we have developed an almost unique combination of mobile human center microclimate measuring techniques, the one that you can see at uh, right in the picture, uh, combined by urban ethnography methods uh, to understand the how we how we call it the spatioclimatic configurations of the space together with the citizens' activities and behaviors in such particular spaces. So our colleagues of uh, the LS, uh, LS2 in lab produce research and development in state-of-art technologies of big size or XXL 3D printing, 3D printing technologies that they use for concrete. And now they move to, to raw earth. They are trying to move to raw earth uh, as printing material because it's natural, is fully recyclable and is carbon free. And by 3D printing, it opens to new forms of spatial and, and aesthetics, a new aesthetic of, of this ancestral material. And, and also from a climatic point of view, um, in, the, in the thermal experience of the city, uh, raw earth provides thermal inertia and hygrometric regulation in the space that couple with other approaches such as misting or vegetation or also shading uh, are positive uh, characteristics for summer cooling. So our idea here in the context of uh, NEB and UNIWELL is to create a research prototype that will explore the three aspects or three, three dimensions of urban cool spots 
uh, wh what you can see here in this slide is, is a, um, a design of a group of students. So we, we have several of them. This is only, only an example of a, a kind of urban cool, cool spot that could be constructed with a raw earth. The three dimensions, as I told you, is the one, the first one is the co-design of a urban space. We would like to study how design and construction by 3D printing in raw earth can be included in a participatory design process from the co-design to the experience, uh, to the citizen experience or in, the, in the use of the space when it, once it is finished, considering also the construction process as a form of open uh, performance, uh, making it to interact the prototype, the, the 3D printing technique with the prototype and also the, the, the expectations of the, of the citizens, making them the things together. Uh, the second one is the application of raw earth uh, XXL 3D printing to the public space, which is, has lots of potentials, but also a lot, it represents uh, several scientific challenge, challenges, such as how to manage the obsolescence and the stability of the structure without adding artificial materials in the compound of the mix, for instance. And third one and last, uh, the study of this, uh, let's say, modern raw earth constructions with a special thermal qualities that we consider could be uh, a, a renewal of urban archetypes such as the Mediterranean piazzas or, or, or paseos uh, in Spain, the, but adapted here for mid-latitude conditions in Central Europe that could help to improve um, the urban life conditions and to preserve uh, urban health. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ignacio. And now we move over to Linnaeus University and to Orsa Stoll. She is going to share with us today, Holding Surplus House. The aim of this project is to explore built environment through giving form of a household that takes what is at hand and strives to share a surplus. Osa is a senior lecturer at the Department of Design, and her work combines participatory design, speculations, and feminist technoscience, often from the perspective of environmental posthumanism. And Osa's research is exploring the ongoing living well across the species in time of exceptional challenges. And I think we are facing the exceptional challenges and need all the ideas we can get. Very welcome, Orsa, and please. Thank you very much. So, um, yes, Holding Surplus House is a collaboration between Linnaeus University, Swedish School of Textiles, Boroas, and Vekro Konsthal. So that's a, an art gallery. Uh, but it's also a collaboration with the participants in a co-design process. And rather than reporting on a project reporting on a project i'll be uh, taking you into the basis of a new research project so we haven't really started but this is the plan to care for people care for earth then uh, share the surplus in a fair way and disseminate it um, and a household is chosen um, because that's uh, where the oikos is is located that's where economy and ecology meet and um, when we say surplus we're talking about time knowledge food love and all of those things that can generate well-being the research team has just started building a tiny house on wheels and you will see images of construction work um, and the household again is important because that's where we can prototype and iterate how to live well together. Uh, that's also where most of us have agency, capacity to change and influence and rearrange socio-materialities. So that's where we can practice making wise choices uh, in a household way that's overflowing, interconnected, uh, not regarding private and public as separate entities. When I say wise choices, I'm thinking in the combination of the four sustainability spheres that we know uh, are interconnected. Uh, that's, of course, the economy, ecology, social and cultural. And they are interconnected in situated ways 
where negotiations must be held. So it's not about finding universal solutions or answers, but fictitious narratives. And I say fictitious because we cannot expect this to be done very easily uh, to pass on to other situations and contexts. And as feminist community economies help us understand, uh, and that's the field that, spear that was spearheaded by Gibson and Graham, they help us see that agency can be located in the household garden as well as in the, let's say, planetary garden. And decisions are made and can be unmade. When I refer to inclusive um, and the inclusive household, that means in this case to invite for collaboration with neighborhood and I mean, so neighborhood as in humans living there, but also with other species. And that's actually a main point that I want to make. We need to take an ecosystemic approach because a household does not only consist of humans. Um, we always live together with other species and we need to do this uh, in, a, in a deliberate co-living. Um, as you can see here, the uh, aesthetics is rather slick at the moment, um, but when it comes to aesthetics, I think it's important also to not just stay with those kinds of images, the new, the, uh, the, the striking, the, the compelling, but also stand the living and dying with our materials and our constructions. So I would say living and dying in and with decay and repair. Um, and in this case, those walls will be covered with living textiles. We're not there yet, but there will be living textiles where, for example, food can grow, other species can live. And that, of course, will influence the whole construction. So we're not only bothered about how to keep something, keep data forever, but also how data can and decay. So with this, um, my, my main point, I think, is that household is an entity where we can ex um, exercise our citizenship um, and a citizenship that takes chances to make decisions and use our agency in wise uh, ways that, that take the four sustainability spheres into account. Thank you very much. And you can follow Holding a Surplus House uh, on Instagram um, and read, read more here. Thank you. Thank you, Orsa. That is really interesting. And I think that what you have seen here is how ma many different aspects that are important in the new European Bauhaus perspective and how many different facets and many different disciplines that need to be involved and also work together. If anybody in the audience who would like to share a question, please write in the Q&A and we will um, forward those questions to the panel. But I invite you back, Ignacio, Saverio and Orsa, for some reflections on our, our collaborative projects. So, if you think about um, the well-being aspects of your project and how that links with sustainability, beautiful and together, that is um, the, you can say, the key words of the new European Bauhaus. I think you have all elaborated on this, but Saverio, um, for you, what would be the most important of these three aspects, or are you interlinking them even further in your project? I'm sorry, I lost last, last words. Well, if you think about these um, sustainable, beautiful, and together as the key words for the new European Bauhaus initiative, would you uh, say that you are working with all three of them or are you focusing more on one than rather of the other parts in your activities? Yeah, 
I, I was presenting the first results of the, this cycle. The next, uh, the last uh, seminar will be on the beginning of July. And uh, I was involving a lot of people, about more than 90 person, 90 researcher or um, specialist from different fields, not only architecture, but also economics, uh, law and social organization. Because I was thinking that uh, the concept of the new European Bauhaus and uh, the proximity is a uh, one concept that can uh, merge inclusion, sustainability, but also aesthetic. Because aesthetics is not objective, it is a subjective question. Mm -hmm. And so people can evaluate as a beautiful uh, according their culture, their education, their, their value. And the value of uh, communities and uh, uh, the last, um, uh, the last slide was uh, the keyword was diversity. I think that diversity is uh, maybe one of the main concept, main uh, goals we, we should uh, risk sometimes of the sustainability and uh, aesthetic is uh, the losing of uh, diversity. And diversity is uh, the main value that we have because the diversity is uh, representing and telling us our history, our different history. And so I think that sometimes the risk of uh, sustainable sustainability is to lose and uh, to homo make homogeneous all lands or urban spaces according a new vision. Because it is very important, but we have to merge it to the specific characters of each places, of each culture, each uh, cultural landscape. That's interesting. What do you say, Osa? See that you are nodding your head. Um, does this also uh, re are reflected in your project? Extremely important. And that's, I mentioned fictitious narratives. Because in, in the meetings between different entities, whether they're, you know, human, humans with different histories, or if it's humans and other actors with agency, there will be friction. And I think that's, uh, to, to achieve well-being, we really need this diversity, but we also need to practice living together so we can live well together. Um, and and, and to accept that there will be frictions. I think diversity, I mean, if you would think of it from a biological or ecological perspective, it would be multiplicity. And we would immediately understand that we cannot, we cannot lose our species because that will make us much more vulnerable, all of us. And I think we can keep that concept sort of in whatever con context we get to, like multiplicity, multiplicity, diversity, this will be helpful for us, even if it's connected to frictions. Ignacio, what are your thoughts? Yes, I, I think we, we approach the, the, the three dimensions as well. Um, I, I would say um, we, we, we start from, uh, from, the, from the, the climate change scenario, what we propose is an adaptation adaptation strategy strategy to climate change assuming that we we cannot uh, apply let's say we could do solutions in all the city as my colleagues say we, we cannot uh, treat all the city in the same way because they are uh, heterogeneities and social and also spatial and physical ones and then we assume that this idea of reducing the temperature can can be useful for for this um, transition for this uh, adaptation to climate change in punctual spaces in the city uh, that could um, uh, recover this idea of living together in the space in uh, during during this uh, this summer conditions so uh, it's impacts uh, uh, from the one side the sustainable sustainability from the point of 
center uh, human center approach because we we our focus is the 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 um, the feeling or the on the sensation the, the the perception of the citizens to then stay not to create a let's say a uniform comfort but to to create a a, a diversity of conditions in the space and also by promoting as i said uh, carbon free materials like uh, raw earth and let's say well also uh, the, the the idea the very idea of uh, co-designing the space and also assuming, a, 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 as uh, Asa said, I, I, I say it obsolescence, but maybe it's more appropriate decay of the material without adding to the raw earth, like more chemical, chemical compounds in the mix that will make it more resistant, but then less interest from a point of view of sustainability, but also on the transformation of the public space during its life. And the end of what well, this is together and inclusive and, and uh, these new things, of, and it's not new things, but the, 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 these reflections of the how, how to would we live in the public space in, in changing climatic conditions needs also a new aesthetics or different aesthetics that could be created in this case if we propose, it's only a proposal, uh, through uh, technology, through 3D printing technology, that it's open source. It's not the idea of, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, let's say, we could also integrate Fab Labs on, on tech. It's, I, I, we assume it's a particular approach. It's not for everything. It's not for every space, but could, could also help in this introduction of technology in the creation of the public space and um, empowering the citizens as well by trying to, to make it. And you also have the opportunity of uh, providing, I wouldn't say a shelter, but a bit more cooler places also for animal life, yeah. uh, for insects. And you have the opportunity also perhaps for, for some of the plants that can grow in a cooler environment. Because yes, as mm. the temperature is increasing, we will need different type of refuge. Uh, and as Osa is pointing out, it is not just us as humans, but we are sure. in part of a larger environment uh, where we also interact with other species. I think you are sharing very nice, um, uh, I, I would say, different approaches, both to the well-being as well as to the new European Bauhaus. But do you think we should we should approach the EU and also propose that we add perhaps another keyword to, to the new European Bauhaus. You talk about uh, diversity and the multi... Osa, what was it? Multiplic Multiplicity. Multiplicity, mm. thank you. Yeah. Mm. Yes. I agree. Uh, yeah. And... and the, the uh, you, you can say you, you talk about the tensions, you talk about the clashing between the disciplines. Uh, there are many opportunities for our disciplines to interact, but we would also come from different contexts. So, so what would be the most important disciplines that, that you feel that you are lacking in your projects? What do you say, Osa? Who would you like to involve in your project? that could could also uh, improve it to a next level or is it too mm. early in your case yeah well we've been thinking a lot about uh, who to invite how to invite and that's of course this the keyword inclusive like how who are we to include how to include so you don't come in at a very late stage and and it's really just for show um yeah i mean this oh, this will be academic, but I think we have many ways of knowing, and we know some things in universities. But we have we also have lots of expertise in living outside of universities. So, whereas I I am particularly drawn to ecology and biology, uh, uh, I think there might be expertise in the you know in the neighborhoods about living well in that kind of neighborhood. I guess this com comes back to Saveri, what you're saying with the proximity and the knowledge of, 
of of being anchored somewhere knowledge of being anchored being part of an ongoing living um and that kind of epistem epistemological approach i think is important that we might know a lot of things as scholars uh, or as practitioners but but we must also acknowledge other kinds of of knowing so Saverio, so in all of the, the team that you are working together with, you mentioned a lot of different subjects and the different disciplines. Um, but are you also inviting, you can say, people from outside the university? In, the, in my field work, yes, I outside of university, I have I met of a lot of people working directly in different places in the in project with a very interesting approach when you are operating in the real society and we need as a university to have a strong relation with the communities because we can't simulate the complexity of a real society the real behavior of people and the the real relation between people and places and uh, I, I think that we have to, to get a really holistic vision, which, is a, which could be different in different cases. I have understood that uh, the juridical dimension, which uh, is regulating the relation between people and between uh, people and uh, institutions is really important for managing because we have a, the, the final result, I think, that in New European Bauhaus should be not only a better environment where people can live, but mostly a real consciousness of the people, of how, the, the, how is the relation they have a, between them and the and all uh, people with a uh, uh, environment. That's because we have, I think we have lost in the uh, last century the consciousness, and we are gaining now. A, a lot of people want to better understand how yeah. they are living and how we, we, how we how, what is the, our relation with the environment. Yeah with nature. Ignacio, who would you like to invite to your project? A quick answer, because we yes. have a question also in the Q&A. Yeah, the, so, so for sure, um, from an academic point of view, I would say, uh, as you suggest, the, 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 the works of uh, ecology or urban ecology to introduce this human and non-human interaction in the process. Um, and outside of academy, I would, of academia, I would say um, we also expect to, to, to make an open call to citizens uh, in the district where we are going to, to develop the, this experience and also to, to politics and, and administrations to, to uh, take part in the design and construction process. So it's, it's very important for us to, to uh, go out of this also more let's say technical and design approach but making it more inclusive and I, I think that that is a very good idea because as universities we're not aside from society we are a part yeah. of society and we should be working in our co-creation mm -hmm. we have a question in the q a for graham so graham how will UniWell benefit from the research knowledge that we have uh, seen presented here and how can we take that back into our work. Thank you very much for the question. And uh, I think what's interesting here is that we have uh, different perspectives looking at the same sort of area across uh, the, the different partners in UniWell. So it's important to be for UniWell actually to facilitate the engagement of different uh, academics across the Alliance and beyond. And then also I think has been talked about is that UniWell University should not operate in a, an academic vacuum, but it's our responsibility to actually communicate and share that knowledge more broadly. And I think Uniwell has a role here, actually, not just in looking at 
researchers and academics from the eight distinct universities, but sharing that knowledge, facilitating that sharing of knowledge, not just among the eight universities, but across all of our communities in which we work as well. So that I think is where the role of UniWell comes into this sort of activity. It's not driving the research, it's enabling and helping to disseminate and to reach a broadest audience possible. Thank you. I think that is a very good uh, representation of what a European university is all about. And I have to stress that working together with our students and seeing the students as the enabler is also important for all of us. We are coming to the close of today, today's session, and I want to thank our panelists. Uh, and I would also like to thank all of you who have been listening today. I think we have been getting interesting aspects and approaches to new European Bauhaus, to the well-being of society and individuals. And I hope that it has created possibilities for collaboration as well as for new ideas. We look forward to working together with you in the future. And we would like to say thank you very much on behalf of UniWell and our initiatives for new European Bauhaus. So we all create a better future. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you.